I'm not sure whether I was the first person to use the word multiverse, but certainly I was talking about this concept a very long time ago. And it's interesting, it has now become rather more of the uh, scientific mainstream. Um, I think, essentially, the key idea is that there may be a lot more to physical reality than the region we can see with our telescopes. The multiverse idea, once thought to be so crazy it only belonged on evening night television, has now become the dominant theory in cosmology. It's unavoidable. You cannot avoid the theory of the multiverse. the word universe I suppose properly should be uh, meant should mean the whole thing everything uh, but we tend to think of universe uh, use the word sometimes just to mean our Big Bang the things we can see out to 10 billion light years in all directions and in that sense it, it's an honest uh, uh, re reasonable question is this unique are there multiple ones and there could be multiple ones in many different senses. Uh, it could be as simple as the fact that there are, the universe is bigger than we think, it's much bigger than 10 billion light years across, and that there are big bangs going off in different places, and there are theories of cosmology, the so-called chaotic inflation, which actually has this as a consequence uh, due to the work of Andre Linde primarily. Then there's another possibility, which is also fairly simple to imagine, just that this big bang is one episode and maybe uh, it, it followed a series of other bangs and uh, it that our universe will make a transition into a different kind of expanding universe and we're just li living through a particular age uh, but then there are other possibilities that are more uh, a little bit more recondite and uh, that have to do with the application of quantum mechanics to the whole shebang and uh, in quantum mechanics, uh, you can, uh, because the, the fundamental quantity in quantum mechanics is not the individual particle uh, or billiard ball, but is something called the wave function that describes all possibilities, you can have a system where uh, the universe has a particle in it, but uh, the, the particle, it's indeterminate whether it's move there or here and they're both possibilities are realized and it's only when you observe it that you see it's either here or there. So maybe both exist. Mo both do exist at the same time and only an outside intervention for collapses the wave function so that the particle is either here or there. It may be that the universe, the big universe, the whole thing, <laughs> is some kind of quantum mechanical superposition of different possibilities. In fact, it almost certainly is because we don't have any other way of, un I mean, that's the best way that I can understand quantum mechanics, is that that is the case. Uh, then there are even more uh, exotic possibilities. The philosopher Robert Nozick has uh, introduced the so-called principle of fecundity according to which, if you can imagine it, it exists. Uh, everything you can imagine exists. They don't exist in the same space-time. They're entirely separate, but um, 
whatever you think of that is there and that it avoids the question of why are things the way they are because whatever you can think of they are that way. In inflationary cosmology, the situation is different, or at least it may be different. Universe does not require any hot beginning to start. In fact, if it was hot in the beginning, it just hurts. Uh, it makes inflation more difficult to occur in most of the versions of inflationary theory. Not in all, but in most of them. So you do not need the hot universe hypothesis. You know, uh, it's actually interesting that this was one of the most sticky um, psychological points which hurt development of inflation because we knew that the universe started like an explosion a hot big bang and that was it was so difficult to accept the notions of chaotic inflation which suggested okay you just start with whatever initial conditions forget about what you learned in school the uh, universe could be cold it could be filled with vacuum if it becomes hot later that's the only thing that matters so in many versions of inflation, in the beginning, was it uh, in a thermal equilibrium, was it hot, it does not really matter, then the universe expands exponentially, becomes absolutely cold, so there is temperature equals zero, there is no photons, no protons, no particles, everything is just blown up by very rapid inflation. Now realize that Einstein gave us this idea that the universe is a soap bubble of some sort. Uh, we live on the skin of this bubble. Okay. The bubble is expanding. That's one of the greatest uh, experimental achievements of the last century, the observation of an expanding bubble. Well, run the videotape backwards. Then the bubble may have come from an instant, a dot. The universe was smaller than a basketball. You could put the universe in your pocket. The universe was smaller than an electron. But if this bang happened once, it can happen again and again, and again, even as we are talking. Universes may have been created even as we begin this discussion. And this is mind-boggling, realizing that entire universes may be created even as we take our shower. The universe, in the form that we see within the domain of our telescopes, extends thousands of times further. We'd be surprised if it didn't extend. The reason for that is that if we look as far as we can in that direction, as far as I've the other direction, we see no difference with the precision of one part in a hundred thousand. So the gradient across that domain is so tiny, it would be amazing if the universe didn't extend thousands of times beyond what we can see. But maybe 
goes much further still. In fact, you could imagine it going on infinitely. And if that were the case, then we have the fascinating possibility that there may be somewhere a universe exactly resembling ours, a galaxy exactly resembling ours, and there could be an Earth with replicas of us, because all combinatorial options will be repeated if you have enough space and enough time. And so it could be that our domain of space and time, the aftermath of our Big Bang, is vast enough to encompass every possible option. That would be fascinating. But even that is not all, because I've talked so far about just the aftermath of our Big Bang. Some people think that our Big Bang is just one of many, and that there could be other Big Bangs, which would be in completely disjoint regions of space and time, maybe even embedded in some higher dimension, and they could lead to different cosmoses. Now, during the last few years, we start calling this everything, we start calling it a multiverse. And the reason why we change it, uh, the name, is that, um, well, we have found that our own universe, the place where we live, it can be divided into extremely large number, extremely large regions. And each of these regions have different properties. So for all practical purposes, it looks like our universe becomes divided into many, many big universes. And if you live in one of them, I mean, it is each of them still a part of our universe. It's still not the whole thing. But if you live in one of them, it is so large that you make measurements around, you never see this other part because it's so far away from you. But then in principle, if you are, well, long living person, <laughs> have unlimited resources, money and everything, you can travel long, long, long time, billions of billions of billions of years, and then eventually come close to a different part of the universe where different laws operate. So from all practical purposes, this would be completely different universe. They would not know anything about us. lots of ideas on this. One is an idea called eternal inflation, that uh, there's a sort of substratum which is expanding exponentially and big bangs pop off in it. Another idea is that there may be different domains of space and time embedded in some higher dimension, just as we can imagine two two-dimensional surfaces, each with ants crawling around on them, and one is not aware of the other, so there could be another universe just a millimetre away from ours, but we're not aware of it because that millimeter is measured in some fourth spatial dimension and we're imprisoned in R3. So there could be other domains of space and time. The other question is, if there are these other domains, are they like ours? Are they governed by the same physics? Do they contain the same sort of atoms? 
Are they governed by the same force of gravity, etc.? And again, that's another separate question. And that's a very important question. The fascinating option is that there are these other universes and they're governed by different physical laws. Space may be different, gravity may be different, atoms may be different. We have this arena, this large arena of 11-dimensional hyperspace. And within it, these bubbles start to expand and they vibrate. And in string theory, of course, we have the music of strings, which gives us uh, the particles we see in nature. Now, to me, this is very pleasing because Einstein spent the last 30 years of his life trying to read the mind of God. And he asked himself, what are God's thoughts? Well, believe it or not, for the first time, we now have a candidate for the mind of God. The mind of God, according to this multiverse picture, is cosmic music resonating through 11-dimensional hyperspace. This larger arena of Buddhist nirvana, 11-dimensional hyperspace, has within it universes, universes that are being created all the time, each one vibrating, each one vibrating with the music of strings. So in some sense, uh, physics is the laws of harmony of these vibrations. Chemistry are the melodies that you can create on these strings. Uh, the universe is a symphony of strings. And the multiverse is the mind of God. how far we will get in meeting that challenge in this century, but that's one of the fundamental questions. Where is our universe in this soap bubble of universes? Where is our universe? Our universe has stars that burn for billions of years. In most of these universes, stars only burn for a fraction of a second. Life never gets started. That's embarrassing, because we, maybe we have a theory of everything, but it may also be a theory of nothing, <laughs> because you can't predict anything. Because somewhere in this bubble bath, is everything. <laughs> is everything and nothing. Because where's our universe? Where are we? Where are we in the US of A in one of these bubble universes? That's embarrassing. I think that we must go there. I think that this is a way of future. We need to go to these more abstract stories. But as of now, we are dealing with this, and this is already abstract enough.